Good morning, guys, and welcome to Thursday, March 12th. Yay, right? All right, so before we get started today, we're going to talk a bit about putting your voice first. This is more of an impromptu experience this this morning. Um, the difference between most days and impromptu days is I have a schedule of things I want to talk about, and impromptus are just things that show up and I want to talk about, like, right now. So... Let me get, get this shared out to the community, Thriving Beyond Codependency. We're having some pretty big um, breakthroughs with students and clients and with community members, with those badasses that are in there. Just, I, it's pretty amazing what people accomplish on the stuff I just teach for free. It's, it's pretty profound. I really love doing what I do. Now... Let's talk a bit, you know, about COVID-19 before we get into this, because this kind of relates to putting our voice first. We need to understand we're in that situation, so let's just keep focused. Um, I have a tool called Distress to Rest that I'll put in the comments below. And if you're on YouTube, hit that subscribe button, and I'll also put that in a comment below. Um, that can help you manage the uncertainty that we're all facing in this, because it's a big deal. This is going to be highly disruptive to all of us. But if we're calmer, then we can make the decisions we need to make because we'll be in tune with our voice and we'll be able to navigate what's coming for us. And we'll be able to address it head on because I'm a big fan of this concept of, of um, what's called radical acceptance and it's just taking it as it is. It's like I'm going to surrender to it. I don't know what it's going to do, but I'm going to lean into it and explore it. I'm going to honor the anxiety I feel about this. The, the, some of the fear, some of the uncertainty. I mean, it's gonna, it's gonna have an impact. So we want to be really conscious about that. And this is also how I put my voice first. Now let's have to talk about this concept of voice, so we know what we're really discussing, right? So in my approach to resolving codependency and transforming from a codependent to a happy person to a confident or what's called individualized person, there's three elements. You got to know your value. Got to be that value. You got to be able to hear it, and then from that hearing, you start to listen to your voice. That voice is your internal expression that shows up in nine different ways, including uh, what's called your desire impulse, uh, repulsion impulse, maybe impulse confusion, intuition, peace and calm, um, and even your emotions, and even uh, what I call the light and heavy sensation. So those are some of those expressions of that voice. This voice helps paint a picture for you about your present, your past, and the future. It's a way in which you can tap into your intuitive guidance and into the knowing you know, to the awareness you be about what's going on for you. Hi, Joy. And this can help you navigate positive, negative, challenging, and fun, and uncertain situations really, really powerfully. But the the trick here, especially for us that have dealt with codependency, is we have to learn how to put our voice first. Okay, And the voice we tend to shut down the most is the voice that shows up through our emotions. How we feel about something. Because we think that we should feel differently. We shouldn't feel anything or we should be happy or we should be ultra tolerant. That we should be resilient to it or something. We we shut down what we feel. Thus, we shut down access to what we know, what we're aware of, and to our voice. We are unable to hear ourselves if we're not willing to acknowledge what we feel. Instead, because we don't acknowledge what we feel, we absorb what other people feel. We get fixated on what they're feeling and they're thinking. We lose ourselves in them and that robs us of the ability to know what's highest and best for us what's loving and genuine for us okay so how do we put our voice first pretty simple we've it is a simple process it's just kind of tricky to implement i call it differentiation or individuation or technical terms for it but it is this i feel x about their behavior i feel x about their opinion of me is a really good example of differentiation. I feel indifferent about their disapproval of me. Now I understand what I'm feeling, and what they're feeling, and what I'm feeling about what they're feeling. This separates me from them. I'm no longer fixated on their disapproval. I am focused on my experience of their disapproval. 
This allows me to know what's real for me. This allows me to have an honest experience with my own emotions and their emotions and decisions. That helps me make honest decisions about what I'm going to do with that relationship. Say, that's how we break free of absorbing the other person. This is also where we can move into a more pragmatic response to gaslighting and to um, the absorption rather than the absorption of the narcissist, for instance. So if they're criticizing us, we're being attacked by them, a toxic person's having their tantrum, we can, rather than trying to figure out what they're feeling or what why they're doing what they're doing, we can ask ourselves, what do I feel about this tantrum they're having? And it's not going to be an analytical statement as an answer. If you say, well, I think of there, then you're not focused on you. If you think, if you answer, well, I feel anxious about the way they're treating me, or I feel scared, or I feel disappointed, or I feel upset, now you're hearing yourself. You're tuned into that voice, and you're putting yourself first. Okay? I want to emphasize the word first here, because a lot of times codependents think they're being narcissistic by choosing themselves first. There's a difference here, and an important one. Okay? Narcissists choose themselves only. Me only. Me, 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 me. That is narcissism. Codependency is you. Maybe me sometime. Maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Eh. Okay? So codependency is ultra-focused on them. Narcissism is ultra-focused on themselves. But healthiness is me and you. That order. Me and you. Um, it can't be you and me because then I won't know what I want if I'm not accessing myself first. But if I know what I want by saying me and you, then I can make an honest decision. This is how we put our voice first, guys. This is how we start to access our intuition and our insight into situations we're dealing with, such as COVID-19 or just money or a relationship or a career or a job or a business or what we're going to do this morning. Because we have an internal knowing. We have an internal insight into things. But because we're, we're fixated on analyzing things and trying to control things and being ex what's called externally oriented, which means I'm trying to figure out what these things, people, places, and things want from me, we, we're not in contact with it. But when we start putting ourselves first and we start putting our voice first, then suddenly we're like, something's off here. Something's wrong with this person. Or like, hmm, there's something I'm curious about about this or which is one of the most fun parts about knowing your voice is you get an inspiration and then you take action on it and it starts to unfold a different reality for you suddenly you start having more success in what you're attempting to accomplish suddenly you start getting insights into the problems that have been you've been confronting and the solutions that resolve them suddenly you stop reacting and you start responding this allows you to be more attuned to your happiness because when you have, when you're anchored in your voice, wait, what? when you're anchored in your value, you're in tune with your voice. And when you're in tune with your voice, you align with your brilliance, which is your vision. And then those things that you have a vision about start to take form almost, almost effortlessly, almost if by magic. It's pretty awesome what starts to happen there. So it's really important to understand that this is why I approach it this way. It anchors us really deeply in our vision, in our happiness, and allows us to make decisions about challenging situations in ways that are intuitive. Like, for instance, I'll give you how I'm responding to COVID-19. I live in Boise, Idaho. We currently do not have any live um, examples of that going on right now. But it's going to happen, right? So my intuition, my sense on this is to focus on growth, both per personally and professionally, growing the business, reaching out, giving you guys tools to manage these things. Two, I've intuited a different price change for some of my services so that they're more accessible. Three, receive it. Okay, Get curious about how we can grow through this what we can change and what we can improve. That's the questions that come up for me. What can we advance in our own lives to further 
our well-being and the well-being of others through this because it's going to pass and what we have to really confront is the economic social impact that will pass too but it passes faster when we're coming from an intuitive curios curiosity point of view rather than a dread fear point of view okay so that's how i'm approaching this because you know guys we're all in it together got your back we want to support you through this because we're gonna we're gonna get through it all right but this is how i put my voice first rather than absorbing the fear of the masses I sit back and go, I don't really need toilet paper and water. What I need is to have a strategic plan for the essentials, which I have, for the essentials and food and water in case there's supply chain disruption. But I also have a focus long term. And this is what leads us through these kinds of moments, whether it's a personal crisis or a social crisis, whatever, focus, a vision. And that vision comes through the voice of my value. Okay, this is why I approach it this way. And I have found this currently to be the most effective means of growing personally and growing professionally in my life. So put your voice first. Differentiate yourself from others by identifying what you feel about their behavior, about their feelings. Okay? Um, and it's never going to be, I feel sad. They, it's, it's not going to be, I feel they feel. It's going to be, I feel X about their feeling their behavior remember that separate yourself from that practice this in your thinking and how you verbalize it to yourself and it will legitimize you and it will break you free of the trance you have about being absorbed in their emotions their experience so let me know guys below what the, uh what you've gotten out of this training today and if any of this made sense i hope it does it should but also know if you need support, join the community. The link is above on Facebook. It's below on YouTube. If you're on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. Remember, guys, I do this every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Let's focus on where we want to be at the end of this really challenging time we're facing. Let's focus on who we want to be through it, and let's do this together. So if you need any assistance, uh, feel free to reach out in the community. I'd be glad to support you there. Remember, guys, that you're, you're you're definitely and always worth knowing, loving, and keeping. Also, I am accepting new students to the Happiness Strategy, which is my 13-week course that helps you master being in your value, voice, and vision. You can take you can apply for that, or you can actually join it rather by taking the master class, which is linked above on Facebook, below on YouTube, and then jumping in. So I will see you guys next week. Be safe out there, and I. I believe in you. Kick some butt and remember again that you're worth knowing, loving, and keeping. Talk to you soon.